So, uh, this was done by IGN. Diablo 4 Blizzard is making a ton of changes based on player feedback. Now, one of the cool things about us being a Diablo partner is we were one of those individuals that were able to bring feedback right to the developers. So, this wonderful community here and uh, myself, we came up with a bunch of different things that we could bring back to the devs, and I'm sure there's a thousand more things we could bring up but we bring up some of the more important things. And you know what? There are a ton of other Diablo content creators um, that are partnered with Diablo and they brought up some really fantastic stuff. I was reading through a lot of the patch notes there or not patch notes, but uh, the, the feedback notes and um, a lot of big brain five head ideas there for sure. So um, kudos to everybody that participated in providing feedback because this is really what it's about, man. You know, you test out a game, that's the whole purpose of a beta, that's the whole purpose of an alpha, you test the game, you provide feedback, and you see what happens from it. So, um, so again, Diablo 4, based on feedback provided, uh, it participated in two betas, one was closed, one was open, right? Um, let's look, minimize backtracking. So that was one thing that was brought up a lot, people didn't necessarily like the backtracking in the dungeons. Personally, I didn't really find too much of an issue with it. I don't think everything should be super linear because then on the other side of the table, you're getting people that are complaining that it's too linear. So um, I didn't find that it was uh, necessarily too much backtracking. Issue for me was that there wasn't enough like excitement in maybe the dungeons. If I had to nitpick it, you know, it's like bring this square thing and this other square, put it on the pedestal and boom, you unlock the door, right? I'd like to see a little bit more variety. Uh, in terms of that, I recently played Last Epoch and I thought that their dungeon systems were really, really cool with their key systems. Like, very unique in that sense. Like, you phase between two different timelines, or one was like you had this orb that uh, created light and you had to throw the light down, and the mobs that were in that light took more damage if they were outside of it, they took less. And those types of things I think are really, really interesting. So, rather than the minimizing backtracking, I think that that's like. Uh, a very face value, so to speak, rather than uh, a bigger potential thing. But you know what? There's like what? There's like a hundred and something dungeons, 180 dungeons or something like that. Who knows what they all look like? Again, this is just beta and I never saw any of the closed play tests. So uh, changing layouts with Blizzard saying it's the one of the most common pieces of feedback it received was around a backtracking with certain dungeons, multiple with certain dungeons, sure. Um, multiple dungeons have since been optimized to reduce this, including Blah, 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 all these said ones right there. Um, our primary goal with the layout changes was to reduce certain kinds of backtracking. There was some backtracking, not wrong to say, uh, which detracted from a player's experience. Well, I wouldn't say that. Uh, Blizzard said structure objectives that previously existed down side paths have now been repositioned to the main area, for example. Okay, I'd like to see what that looks like. While our dungeon offers a variety um, of objectives to complete player feedback stated that uh, the action of completing each dungeon felt tedious. Tedious, uh, yeah, maybe. Um, I think again, for me, it was more so the diversity on what they wanted you to do in every single um, thing, I guess, I guess playing a little off tedious, but uh, dungeon events will also occur much more frequently in the final version as Blizzard has increased the chance for an event to spawn in dungeons from 10 to 60%. Interesting. Quality of life improvements were made, such as removing the wait time when depositing an animus. Uh, increasing movement speed when carrying ancient statues and equivalent items and adding a mini map ping to newly opened doors. Sure, a little QOL, nothing wrong there. Uh, while our dungeon offer a variety of objectives to complete, player feedback stated that the action of completing each objective felt tedious, much like the quote right above. Uh, Blizzard said, we hope that providing bonuses such as the increase to mobility while carrying certain objective items will streamline and vary the experience of completing objectives. The adjustment is merely a starting point, and we intend to extend this philosophy to keys in a future update. Okay. Sellers have seen similar changes as Blizzard has increased the chance for a dungeon event to occur in the sellers. So I like that. Uh, sellers were kind of underwhelming IMO. You kind of jumped into the seller and you like killed one mob and you're like, oh, 
Um, I heard uh, that they, I think they put a chest here. Um, or maybe that's what they mean by the increased chance of a dungeon event. Uh, they now consistently reward the player with a chest pawn completion. Oh, you mean it's in the next sentence I didn't read? Oh, um, issues have also been fixed where the sellers would prematurely be marked as completed and the guaranteed elite monster would be absent from the seller. Well, that's a good change or a good fix. Uh, so I like this. Uh, sellers were kind of underwhelming IMO. They're really past the point of grabbing the... Uh, some of them had the no no did some of them have the powers oh my god my brain's not working right now i'm still waking up with my coffee here but uh they just didn't seem like super rewarding so i'm happy that they're doing something with it to add a little bit more reason to jump on in there classes are also changing okay changes have been made to the classes too the barbarian has received a passive 10 percent uh damage reduction its whirlwind skill now deals more damage and costs more fury and the double swing enhancement refunds its full fury cost. Its full fiery cost. When used on stunned or knocked down enemies. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, Momo. I mean, it's not going to be for everyone, right? That's the reality of it. Don't have to like a game. If you like a game, you like a game. If you don't like the game, you... You don't like the game nobody has to justify it either way right that's kind of up to the person's decision the druids the companion skills will now deal heavily increased damage the ultimate skills have had their cooldowns reduced okay the use of uh or the usability of maul and pulverize has been improved and using a non-shape-shifting skill will now transform a druid back to their human form so i didn't play the druid a ton but when i was playing the druid it was kind of cool there was like some um, like shapeshift weaving almost that you would uh, basically inherit. I forget what their energy spend is, but you would um, every time that you change back to human form, you would gain a little bit more of your spending resource. And so depending on what skills you were rolling, you could almost do this like shapeshift weave. It was kind of interesting. Uh, the Necromancer summoning uh, minions will die more often, uh, meaning players will need to utilize corpses more often. Meanwhile, many Book of the Dead stat bonuses have been increased. Corpse Explosion skill has had its damage reduced, and the brightness of the skill to warriors and mages have been lowered. Okay, well, I don't think that the brightness on the warriors and the mages were really a big issue. Um, utilize the corpses more often. Yeah, maybe clean up some of the screen clutter necromancers with all the corpses on the ground like you're kind of looking like i did notice when you're just playing the necromancer versus like some of the other classes like you're just looking at a shitload of corpses on the ground and you don't really get to see like the dead models you don't really get to see you know some of the graphic terrain and and whatnot so i don't know maybe using the corpses a little bit more often um i guess you're always going to be weaving in a bunch of summons and depending on your build who knows um interesting though um, so yeah, they did get reduced. I'm not going to lie. Their corpse explosion with uh, blood mist was insanely strong. It was super, super strong. Um, a lot of people were complaining that the skeletons looked too cartoony. What do you guys think? You guys think, you guys think uh, it looked too cartoony? I think I was okay with them. I, I didn't really mind them. I, I could see them doing it a little bit more rough around the edges, a little less... As you say, cartoony. I think they were okay. The beta skellies were better. I didn't see them before beforehand. Yo, what's up, shirt? I didn't mind how they look, but yeah, I could see how people that really want to buy into the darkness of kind of bringing it back more to like the D2 stage on what that would, what that should maybe quote unquote look like. Um, okay, I'm going to have to pronounce this. Uh, the rogue subterfuge 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 right uh skill have had their bonuses increased alongside multiple passive skills while all imbuement skills have had their cooldowns increased hmm. okay imbuement was kind of cool um there was multiple different ways that you can imbue your um kind of like cast or your next hit um you know there was poison there was shadow and i think there was a couple of other ones um I saw some pretty 
pretty damn strong rogue builds um and i don't know again you know we play the level 25 and make a lot of speculations i don't know how that's necessarily going to scale as you get further along in the actual game and you get into the paragon boards speaking of which we just went live with a paragon board video you can find it on the youtube channel and uh, i'll try to include it in the comments below as well but we um we did come out with a video with that but i did see a lot of rogue builds that were insanely strong to the point of basically having infinite um an unlimited amount of resource spenders with like twin blade builds and being able to solo the bosses in like a minute or two it was quite crazy so um maybe this will help out a little bit i don't know i didn't really deep dive many of the specs i found myself um trying to play all the class and just all the classes and trying to experience them all equally and uh, not really like min max one class too much again it's level 25 i'm not too worried about that stuff but i did find that i wasn't able to try as many builds as i wanted to because the second weekend they actually reduced the amount of legendary powers that were in uh, or that were dropping in general so i found myself for like two three days just trying to farm like two legendary powers and i just could not get them to drop and uh, it wasn't until the community started helping me out with legendary powers that i was able to uh um able to actually try out the builds which brings me to another point that i don't know if they're going to talk about this uh and that is legendary trading because under on my understanding you weren't allowed to but it seemed like we were able to trade legendaries that had the word adventure in the name and or quest rewards so who knows finally the sorcerer's charged bolt damage has been increased um okay it's been increased and the mana cost reduced chain lightning damage has been reduced and the cooldown of incinerate skills enchantment bonus has been reduced so a lot it looks like a lot of changes on the sorceress i mean chain lightning was really strong when we look at it face value it was really strong um one of the cool like uh, i don't know what to call them but like one of the cool add-ons i guess um to the, the chain lightning would bounce between a single target like back between you and them you and them and it was really good even for single target in AoE. Uh, firewalls will now spawn underneath enemies more frequently when using its enchantment bonus. And the lucky hit chance has been increased for the meteor skill enchantment bonus. Enchantment bonus for the lucky hit chance. Okay, I'm not familiar off the top of my head what it was. It looks like a lot of changes on the sorcerer side. It'll be interesting to see what the final product is. Whenever, uh, you know, I'm really uh, talking, just holding on right here. I'm really torn as to... What class I am going to play. I don't know about you guys. Maybe you guys already know. Uh, and it's funny that it says here, which one will you use on June 6th? I'm not sure, man. We did another YouTube video that was talking about uh, what classes, um, you know, my class tier list. I have a video up on YouTube about that. And uh, I'm almost in a deadlock between three classes, and that's Necromancer, Rogue, and Sorcerer. I really don't know which one I want to play. I'm going to have to make a decision closer to then. I just really don't know. I kind of enjoyed a lot of the classes. Um, obviously, like Druid and Barbarian were a little different. They didn't have their class quest. Barbarians ended up getting hit pretty hard. They were they were probably out of all five classes, definitely the more challenging class. Um, but uh, I think they made some changes with how much damage they take, like 10% or something I read somewhere. Um, whenever we introduce changes to our classes, this is the goal of making both them and their skills feel impactful and powerful. Your feedback has helped us uphold this idea. Well, you're welcome. Some players have uh, adeptly uh, noticed that certain skills were too powerful. One of our goals for skills is to have them be interesting to wield and interactive in terms of itemization and combat feel. We made or we've made some changes to help out in this regard, with one example being the Necromancer's minions. We've made changes, or we've made a change, sorry, that makes them more vulnerable in combat. I think depending also like how you spec them like um the uh the mages the skelly mages there was like one where they do after like five seconds they do 40 percent more damage but every time that they do damage they like uh take a crap load of uh damage essentially every single time that they cast and uh, i was finding that i had to like spawn them a, a fair amount so i think it does depend a little bit um which will make raising the dead more an active component of the necromancer's gameplay that could get really dry i don't know uh launch is just the first step of our class balance journey yeah there's going to be changes as it goes through as the big brain five heads come together and they 
figure out the best way to build out classes in endgame. So um, a better quality of life. All right. Blizzard is making further quality of life changes alongside fixing a ton of known issues in the Diablo 4, like the butcher boss becoming unresponsive. There was some cheese strats where you could almost hold them behind like some barrier and just like tee off on them. Um, a lot of these changes are coming to the game user interface as Blizzard is shifting things around to allow for a better experience. Game's user interface. It starts with the chat box now being displayed on the left side of the screen. Oh my goodness. Yes, Blizzard. I was talking about this in the uh in the beta itself and i had no idea why they had it on the right side it was so invasive it was in a weird spot it was over your inventory it was just really really silly i didn't understand why they they had it over there and a lot of people were saying oh well it's because of you know console players or the ui shift because you could move like the hp bars over to the left hand side I, still i don't care about that i just don't think that the chat should ever be over your inventory it's just like a really weird spot to have it um so I'm sure they'll come up with solutions with that. Uh, when using the centered action bar configuration. Yeah, when using that, right. Uh, a character stats will also now be displayed by default when the players click the materials and the stat buttons within their inventory. While the move and interact inputs can now be mapped to one button. So it's a big one that we brought up. We put it in multiple videos and we included it in our feedback. While the primary attack input can be mapped to a secondary button. Finally, the text is being changed to a new serif font. A lot of big changes here, chat. Okay, a lot of people were asking for these types of things. I myself didn't really care about the font, but I could see how it was kind of uh, very vanilla. Um, but when it came to this move and interact input, I know Agans kind of mentioned it to me the moment he read it. He's like, hey, did you see that they did that? And uh, I'm very happy to hear that. So my big concern, again, is that I want to have force move and interact on the left click. And then I want to be able to put my primary attack to like a shift left click. So remapping the primary attack. Um, you were able to map it to a variety of things, but you weren't able to do the shift uh, left click. So I'm interested. It doesn't really say that specifically, but I'm hoping that we now have that option. So we'll have to see. Um, Blizzard will discuss these changes and more in a developer update live stream taking place on April 20th. That's with Riker. Um, and that's gonna be happening at 2 p.m. Eastern. So be sure that you guys are aware of this because that's gonna be the next big dev update. So that's happening again. That is Thursday, next Thursday, this is gonna be happening. Blizzard's discussing these changes and that's happening again at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's gonna be the, the devs with Riker. So uh, game director, Joe Shelley right here, associated game, uh, Joseph Piora. And associate director of the community, Mr. Adam Fletcher, the one we all know. Uh, thanks for all the hard work that the Diablo uh, Blizzard staff does for this game. Uh, big shout out to them. We'll also share details about the end game. Woo, that's going to be a good one. Because that's something that matters a lot to me personally. I think um, when I think about any video game, you know, the curve is the curve. Getting to the end game is getting to the end game. But what happens when you get to the end game? Is there enough to keep me in, um, invested? Because I'm not really a, I'm not really one to just go around and like level this character or level that character or, or do anything, right? Like I want something that I enjoy wasting my time on at the end of the game. So we'll have to see, you know, whether that be PvP, PvE, the gear hunt. You know, uh, the betas that were a struggle to even join for some people for both KFC <laughs> and the Q time related issues saw the Sorceress and the Necromancer classes played the most, though a total of so and so deaths were recorded in a total of more than 60 million hours played. Huh. So there you have it. Some of the immediate changes that they're having. We're going to hear more about the end game. And what that's all going to entail on April 20th, mark it on your calendars, 2 p.m. Eastern is going to be the time or whatever else that you may reference to 7 p.m. UK or 11 a.m. Pacific. But I'm very interested to see this uh, interview. I'm sure Riker will present some really good questions for the developers. And I really want to know what is the end game. So some really good news in here, though. Really good news. Some class balance changes, some force move changes. Um, font changes. A lot of people were pissed off about that. I thought it was a bit of a meme and kind of funny that everybody was like, the text! 
the fort! But hey, everybody's got their different things that they like and dislike, so who am I?